Welcome to Lifespan News, your source for longevity science updates. I'm your host, Brent Nally. If you missed last episode, you can watch it by clicking the card above. We encourage you to check the description below for links to these stories. For our first story, a fruit fly study from the University of Washington School of Medicine may help explain how genes and other factors influence an individual's response to restricting calories. Researchers compared the levels of 105 metabolites in fruit flies from 178 strains which had been fed a normal diet or a restricted diet. They analyzed whether there was a relationship between the flies' diets, their metabolite levels, and changes in their lifespans. They found several genes that appeared to play a role, including one variant of a gene called CCHA2R that codes for a neuropeptide receptor found in the brain and the gut and which is involved in nutrient sensing and satiety response. Flies, of course, aren't humans, so we'll be on the lookout for more studies similar to this in humans. Let us know what you think about this story in the comments below. Did you know that your tissues and organs age at different rates? Changes to the methylation state are one of the ways that gene expression changes during aging, and this is part of the epigenetic alteration's hallmark of aging. By measuring the methylation state, it is possible to get a reasonably accurate view of how biologically old a particular tissue or organ is based on its gene expression profile. A team of researchers in Brazil has developed a DNA methylation clock specifically for the aging of skin. Specialized clocks that incorporate these differences will help researchers to take more accurate measurements of aging and validation of interventions that seek to reverse aging. However, considerable work needs to be done before more accurate biological aging clocks can be developed. Currently, they can be somewhat hit and miss. A large study led by a University of Southern California has found that having greater amounts of the peptide humanin is closely correlated with having longer lives and better health in both animals and humans, including lower risk for Alzheimer's. Humanin levels have previously been observed to decrease with age in many species. In this new study, the scientists observed higher levels of humanin in organisms predisposed to long lives, including the famously age-resistant naked mole rat, which experiences only a very slow decline in levels of humanin circulating in the body throughout its approximately 30-year lifespan. In humans, researchers observed higher and more sustained levels of humanin in 18 children of centenarians versus a control group of 19 children of non-centenarians. So while humanin has long been known to help prevent many age-related diseases, this is the first time that humanin has been shown to also increase lifespan. Read the study linked in the description below, and also let us know what you think in the comments below. Our favorite naked mole rat is in the news again. Yes! A new research study from Japan has found the resistance of naked mole rats to aging and age-relating effects is due at least in part to an unusual ability to clear away senescent cells. The senescent cells in naked mole rats are unusually vulnerable to reactive oxygen species. Strong antioxidant defenses might not be necessary in the low oxygen underground environment where naked mole rats live. This vulnerability unexpectedly helps them avoid damage from senescent cells. This study suggests that senolytic drugs, which kill senescent cells, may be an approach to increase human health span and lifespan. Only more good science will let us know for sure, but please let it be true. What's love got to do, got to do with it? All right, I'm not Tina Turner, clearly. For our final story, a research team from Tokyo University of Science explored the love hormone, oxytocin, as a therapy to combat cognitive disorders like Alzheimer's disease. Oxytocin is known to decrease with age. It is also involved in learning and cognitive performance. So the researchers of this new study wanted to explore the effects of oxytocin on amyloid beta-induced cognitive impairment, typically seen in Alzheimer's disease. Oxytocin improved neuron signaling in brain slices treated with AB. This suggests that oxytocin can reverse AB-induced cognitive impairment, but the usual caveats apply. This is in mice, and it's at the very early stage of its research. So make sure that you're subscribed so you can keep up with stories like this as they continue to unfold. That's all the news for this episode. Quick reminder that LEAF's third annual Ending Age-Related Diseases Conference is coming up very soon, August 20th and 21st, and you can still get your 10% off ticket by using the discount code BRENTIN2020. I look forward to seeing you there online.
If you found this video valuable, then please make sure if you haven't already to like this video, share it on your social media, let us know what you think in the comments below, and make sure that you're subscribed and you have notifications turned to all so that you don't miss any of Leaf's content. We hope to see you in the next episode at least as healthy as you are now.